This is the StoryWorks Roundtable, where we have conversations about craft. Because becoming a successful author begins with writing a great story. This week, we're continuing our conversation with graphic designer Daria Brennan. It's all about book covers, and if you haven't heard part one, make sure you go back and listen to it. This week, we are looking at book covers side by side. Daria curated pairs of covers. It is a great discussion because we really get into the nitty gritty of what makes a cover great and what can tip that scale to the other side. So you can find those images at storyworkspodcast.com in the show notes, or you can watch the episode on YouTube. Enjoy. All right. Okay, so Daria, you sent us these two covers. Do you need to um, say anything by way of setup? Well, uh, I want to say about these two covers, they're both listed in uh, woman, woman's fiction, which is kind of always, which is good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I would like to discuss a little bit the difference between a right and a left cover. Uh, okay. Cover on the right side, cover on the right side is absolutely properly done. Great uh, combination of typeface, colors, contrast, it's very visible in a small side, size, and it completely speaks its genre. And the cover on the right, on the left side, sorry, it's absolutely, it's a very nice and original design, but there is one thing that is missing, and it's actually a contrast, which makes uh, title and uh, main graphic kind of not recognizable in a smaller size, size than this. Mm-hmm. So this cover would like its contrast, which can be fixed, of course, by adding an, one or two maybe colors or a little bit tweaking a color palette or something something like that. Mm-hmm. So I just want to go through this first pair of covers by myself. And now when you show the next covers, I, I would like us to go through it together. And if sure. anyone... Uh, questions about these covers, feel free to ask. Mm-hmm. Shoot. Sure. Well, I'll just say I think the copycat cover is very difficult to read. The yeah. uh, cursive font against that striped background and then the, the floral pattern on the gold stripes kind of sucks the font into the pattern, too. Exactly. Exactly. Which, which is all because of lack of the contrast. Mm-hmm. A yeah. little bit tweaked to be perfect, but mm-hmm. it needs more work, I would say. Definitely. But a great, great idea, definitely. Great car- covers for the, for a woman fiction, definitely. Mm-hmm. I like that we get to see these side by side, too, because they both have that white silhouetting. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you kind of get that both of them have a similar kind of concept. But yeah, one definitely pops more than the other. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, definitely. All right. Two new covers. <clears throat> so yes, do you want power... us to comment on them first? Yes. Uh, okay. Yes, yes. And can you try and guess the genre of these covers? Mm. Mm. Well, mystery thriller. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the one on the left, the gold medal <laughs> is obliterating <laughs> the author's name and the subtitle. Um it seems kind of ridiculous to to cover up your text. Does that say it's a gold cover contest too? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it says book cover contest gold, and it's hard to read the the words on the metal. So if you're, you know, it's like they blew it up so big that it lost its sharpness. Well, the whole mm-hmm. cover isn't very sharp. Everything's really hard to yeah. see in that. Mm-hmm. Okay, it could be low resolution that we're looking at right now. Mm, so that's true. The sharpness, yeah. But it's true, unfortunately, uh, priority on this cover is kind of mixed up because the title, author's name, and subtitles should be the most visible thing in a foreground. Mm-hmm. I instead, have, we have this <laughs> golden label, which is also kind of distorted, I, I, I think. 
kind mm -hmm. of high of the color, which is not good. <laughs> Definitely not good. Yeah. And the font for dead end is really um, boring to me. It just looks, I, I'm not sure what font that is, but it doesn't interest me visually. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very flat and and you've got that mixed symbol thing that we were talking about earlier with that red hand in the middle of the forest. You don't really, like, they aren't cohesive. You don't know which one's more important. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Great. Great. Excellent. And definitely titles should, uh, should have more contrast uh, compared to the background. For example, mm -hmm. on the right cover, on the cover on the right side, the title is big and prominent and it has... Uh, this color it's 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 speaking for itself it's definitely definitely good cover mm -hmm. i like the person in the trees on the dark season cover that raises questions right away you know who is that is he coming or going what's in the light behind him and um exactly. you know the dead end book is missing that you get the tunnel effect with the trees but there's no sense <laughs> of mystery that you get with the figure in dark season Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. It's it's a, it's absolutely very simple, but very effective and, and really good cover. Mm -hmm. With we can say sim similar elements with mm -hmm. black and white. Those that try to achieve that mystery feeling, one is complete success. Success. The other one needs a little bit more work. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other comments on these two covers? Mm -hmm. All right. So let's move on. Okay. Mm. Mm, Matt, do you want to comment first? <laughs> oh, these ones are, are harder to, to comment on because at first blush, they are both they both look pretty decent and pretty similar, but the one on the left, uh, it's funny, all the ones we don't like are on the left. The one on the left, the uh, gold font kind of blends into the gold background. It's hard to read. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. That's the only thing. The both have such a strong and powerful powerful image. They're really strong covers. I like really like both of them. But the cover on the left just slightly the title blends into the background mm -hmm. and it's hard to read in a in a small small size. That's that's the only Right. Yeah. I mean I think it's even challenging to read at this size, but if you're looking at thumbnails on Amazon, I mean how could you read that? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it really disappears. And How important is it for the author's name to be legible at thumbnail size? Yes. <laughs> I mean, is it so? Like when you when when Alita like shrunk them down, the one on the left I could barely read the author's name, and the one on the right was pretty clear. But does that yes. matter? Well, it does matter. It's. Uh, there is actually lots of authors that are insisting on writing their, their name uh, much, much smaller than it should be. I, I really don't, and always the designers are respect, respecting that decision of theirs. I don't know if th that would be the shyness. Maybe they don't want to put their name to be very, very visible. I, I really don't know what, what the reason of that, but definitely the, the, the author's name should be much bigger. Then mm -hmm. it is on, on the cover on the left yeah. side. That one on the left, it almost looks like the author's name was an afterthought, you know, because like the character mm -hmm. takes up so much of the frame that the author's name is just like tiny up at the top. Yes, yes, that's correct. But at this size, at this size, size of the girl and size of the author's name, it fits perfectly. It's fine. But if the author's name is bigger, then the girl sh should be moved a little bit towards right. down. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah, Interesting. I think as a as an author, you definitely want name recognition because so many people are writing series and someone might remember your name before they know the name of the next book that you want them to right. be looking for, you know? Right. Yeah. Yes. All right. So here's the next set. Ooh. <laughs> that spider's creepy. I know. Isn't that gross? <laughs> <laughs> that totally like, freaks me out. <laughs> so, okay, I actually like the cover on the left better, even though I think the font and the text is all wrong. I really like mm -hmm. the wing and the birds. 
much Mm -hmm. it's much more appealing to me whereas the spider repulses me so (laughs) i want to turn away from the demon's grave cover whereas i'm drawn to forget tomorrow even though i know the font and the text is all wrong what do you guys I, think? I really love that wing as well. I think the yeah. graphic of it is awesome, but yeah, the composition of the text to the graphic is really hard. I can't even read that sentence at the bottom, and oh, I it's know. all the way up. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a very traditional publishing thing where they insist on putting a blurb on the cover, even though you can barely read it when you fit the whole blurb on there. Yeah, yeah, but that's that's kind of okay if you can't read it because you it really can't fit on a, on the front cover that, that's that's yeah. true totally. but you you were actually all right about these covers although you have things you like and dislike which is of of course your personal taste mm-hmm. i like uh, well, i chose the, these covers because the both uh, both uh, fo- uh, graphics on the cover are really strong they're making their point both of the covers there's speaking very strongly and loud, communicating really, really well, by my opinion. But the only thing is the cover on the le- left side, it has such a small title. Mm-hmm. That's the only the only thing uh, that I would change on this cover, while the cover on the right side has a big prominent title, as it should. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah you know, I don't know what you guys think of this, but the tower on the demon's grave cover bothers me because the peak of it is right where an earring would go. So to (laughs) me, it looks like it's attached to her head instead of being either foreground or background. It looks like some ginormous earring. Yeah, there's like four or five different things going on there on the right that I didn't even notice at first glance. Yeah, you know, there's the lightning and the leaf veins and the tower and the spider and the it's 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 a lot actually yeah, going. It yeah, is a lot. But, but no, not that much, you know. It definitely adds to the atmosphere. Yeah. It, it, it adds to the atmosphere. It's not very big and prominent uh, as a face of a girl and that spider, which is obviously important for the story, or it mm-hmm. wouldn't be there, I would say. I didn't read the book. I don't know what it is about. It. But it, it adds that element of creepiness, I would mm-hmm. say. Yeah. It gives so, you the mood, for sure. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And it's a little bit aside. I think it works really well, but okay, you mentioned the the tower going into the ear. It's yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's good. That doesn't really bother me as much. I, mm-hmm. I just think it's kinda cool that they put all the other elements that probably the author wanted on the cover. Um, but they're so minimal in background that it does take a little bit of, like it has a lot of depth to it. Mm-hmm. There's you feeling yeah. that layers, which I kinda love. Right. Yeah, you do definitely get layers and it takes time to notice everything because I'm so like the face and the spider jump out so much. And Mm -hmm. then there's the spider is kind of like a train wreck thing because of the fear. It's like hard to look away from it, (laughs) you know, and then I have to move my eyes around the right side of the cover to get away from the spider. And it's like, oh, look, look at the veins and look at the tower and look at the lightning. So it's kind of a journey through those images. Mm -hmm. All right. Another (laughs) one. Talk about another wow image. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Breast cover, that'll catch your eye. <laughs> so definitely horror stories, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Those yeah. the font of the effects on that font on the left cover are really cheesy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if I would call it cheesy, but absolutely appropriate for this this uh, genre of the book out, of the book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It doesn't say anything much about the book if we don't see that creature behind in the background, that creepiness, the font is quite, quite poor, I would say. And mm-hmm. although they try, try to do, I don't know, do something with this uh, over, over, it's, it's just, oh, it's, it, I'm sorry, <laughs> it is just <laughs> over, it is just overdone and very, very, very hard to read. Yes. And yeah. the cow on the right side I chose, because it was designed by the author. <laughs> by oh. the author. 
Yes. Really? Wow. Exactly. Yes. That's yeah, amazing. Because, uh, there's uh, covers are same genre. They share a similar color colors, and one is done by designer, and the other one is done by the author. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Well, yes. Christopher Ruse obviously knows how to. Yes. Do and some that graphics answers, work. Yeah. Yes, and that answers also your question: Should authors design the covers? Well, some do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I should, yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Yes. If you can do it well, you can do it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I really like that cover. It's so intriguing to see the person in the mask, and that I think those are um, plague masks. Doctors during the medieval plagues would wear these masks to sort of ward off the plague, the it's, kind of yeah. evil spirits of the plague. And I don't know if it was supposed to have any sort of respiratory effect, but it looks like a crow's beak. <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. No, and then the posture of the person with it, oh mm -hmm. man, is creepy all on its own. <laughs> yeah, very creepy. Yeah. Cool. Other thoughts on these covers? No? All right. There we okay. go. So. Here we have yeah, two covers, also same genre. They're both science fiction. I nope. never would have guessed science fiction for yep. the one on the left. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. <laughs> I know. They actually have to spell it out at the bottom because right? nobody thinks it's sci-fi until it says a science fiction short story. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, that's, that's yeah, you don't know if that's the author. Like, is that his author photo and he's just using this for a cover because it's a short story and he didn't want to buy a cover? Or or is that, or is that guy supposed to be the last cyborg, you know, with his yeah. glass of whiskey or whatever in the snow? <laughs> it's... <laughs> It's a little confusing. The intention of this image is you can't read its intention. So you don't know why would I want to read the story, you know? I definitely agree. The, the story just doesn't relieve its genre and that's it. Mm -hmm. and, and the glass. <laughs> <Yeah. just> <laughs> I, 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 that's it. That, that was their mm -hmm. decision. They, they went with that one. Mm. Although the cover as it sells looks really good. Yeah. But it's just as if it's trend. It's just as if it, there is nothing wrong with the cover. Everything is mm -hmm. right. The, the title is prominent. It's, it's easy to read. The contrast is excellent. But it just doesn't fit the genre of the, of the book. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is the, a very, very good problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The mood seems to be cocktail party, which I don't think they really wanted to, <laughs> to get there. Yeah. Or if Hemingway lived in Canada instead of <laughs> Cuba, you know. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. So the Richard Fox cover, The Ember War, is really nice. I mean, it. it yes. I definitely get a sense of what this book should be about based on the cover. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. and yeah. Even down Military sci-fi. Yeah. 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 No, it's excellent. It's excellent. Strong industrial font, uh, colors, mood. It has everything that, that science fiction cover should have. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Great. All right. Oh, this is a. This is cool. Now. <clears throat> These are two book covers. They're, they all design. Designs are absolutely brilliant in both of them. There is nothing wrong with any of these two designs. It is just a stock photo that has been used on the cover. Covers, it's unchanged and it's very, very noticeable stock photo. Mm -hmm. And this is what happens when you get a stock photo, uh, put it on the cover completely unchanged. That's what you get. One book cover is best uh, by the best selling author and it's, it's very well known. And the other cover appeared just recently, I would say maybe six months ago or something. I, I really, I'm not sure, but something like that. It's very recent. So that's, that's the problem you can have by using just one unchanged stock photos on mm -hmm. your cover. Yeah, it was really confusing to me when I first saw this because I thought it was the same book 
and not just the same figure on two covers. And I was like, broken pieces, broken places, dull parts. Are they all part of a series? Is it the same series? Wait, but the author's names are different. So I, I really had to puzzle it out. So if I were shopping for a book to read, I, you know, I would probably think I already owned the book if I saw, had one and then saw the other one or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. That's it. I just wanted to warn about, about that. <laughs> yeah. Those kind of scenarios that are happening, unfortunately. Yeah. Mm. So people are using stock images, but then not actually customizing them. Customizing them, yes. Just not even cutting them, obviously. Right. Do you think that happens when authors get one stock image and make their own covers? Or do you think there are, shall we say, amateur designers who aren't, you know, taking it far enough? They're not even uh, amateur designers. They're professional designers, some oh. of them. <laughs> yeah, sure, because this is a professional designer. As I said, designs are, are really good. This is not uh, the work of amateur, amateur or, or author. Mm -hmm. It's a work of a professional. Mm. Just it needed few things changed so it would make a difference from original stock photo because, as I said, it is very, very recognizable. Mm -hmm. And as you said, it, it's it's not very likely that you 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 would forget something like that when you see book cover that you're gonna forget it because it's it's very catchy. Yeah, it is definitely. Huh. So I guess writers should, um, you know. Make sure that when you see your covers, it's, yeah, the stock images Absolutely. have been changed. Interesting. <laughs> cool. So thoughts, Matt and Catherine, on like what looking at those covers side by side showed you? No, I mean, it was, it was really educational. I mean, I, I like the tour, obviously, but I mean, yeah. it's nice to see them <laughs> side by side and talk about them because then, you know, you, you're putting what, your first reaction is into words, which is always nice. Cause I think like a lot of authors, um, just people in general, right? Like they have a good gut feeling for a book cover, mm -hmm. right? They see it, uh, especially people that have been reading their whole lives. Um, but they never really know how to put it into words. And I think authors suffer from that, you know, like w when you're communicating with your designer, you need to know how to put those things into words. So it's nice to go through that. Yeah, yeah it is definitely. And thank you, Daria, for curating those, for putting the photos together and, yep doing that for us. Your website is bgraphica.com and we'll be sure to put a link in our notes, but that's B like a bumblebee, B-E-E -E, graphica.com. Yes. Thank you for listening to the StoryWorks Roundtable. Find all our shows, show notes, and videos at storyworkspodcast.com. <laughs>